Will you pray with me? God of light and life, open our eyes as well as our ears so that we may not only hear your words preached today, but let your word live in our lives and in your world through Christ our Lord. Amen. We live today in a world of people on the move. Millions of people move around the globe from place to place each day for various reasons. We have seen people move from their homes due to displacement caused by war, political and racial persecution, natural disaster, local economic hardship, and sometimes move willingly to seek for bread and butter. It is evident migration and its effects are a major theme in the core of the biblical narratives. Just like today, there are various reasons during biblical times why people migrated. We saw how Adam and Eve left the beautiful garden God placed them. We saw how Abraham and Sarah ventured out on a single promise from God. We saw how Moses was able to guide the Israelites from bondage in Egypt across the Red Sea and then through the desert to freedom. The Gospels tells us how Jesus even began his life as a refugee, hiding from the evil King Herod. We saw how Mary and Joseph were not free from brutal civil war like what we see today around the world, where so many people are displaced. But they journey from the call of God to save our Savior. There are various migrations across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, across national boundaries, physical boundaries, and beyond other things that we fully could not understand, but people just moved. These narratives create a world that works for all of us, that are testament of hope. Migration has been a human reality throughout history. I remember for me when I started my visa process to travel to California to attend college. I was so excited. But the day I picked up my passport to travel, it was another discouragement for me. I felt that I'm coming to California. There will be no rice, nothing for me to eat. <laughs> but then by it, I went back and consulted my geography books, and they said, oh yes, they grow rice in California. So, <laughs> so I'll be fine. When the plane took off, I was looking out of the window, and I saw Freetown disappear in, in the air. And while I was sitting down in the plane, I thought to myself, when will I see Freetown again? And it was a strange thing for me until I arrived in East Berlin. During, that was during the communist days. But I was happy I met friends on the road. There are many stories that are similar to mine in this congregation. Some of you move from other states to California. There are others from different countries far away to California. But no matter where you travel from, there was a reason for your move. I moved to seek higher education. Others moved for economic reasons. There are others that they were displaced due to political reasons, and others because of war. There are many of us here this morning that have got those thoughts when we ventured out to be in California many, many years ago. If you can remember the day that you made up your mind that you're going to move, and 
And when that day came, you said to yourself, this is it. I'm going to move. When we first met Abraham, he was living in Ur. The Lord said to him, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. Now Abraham has to depart unknown to a destination that he's going. How can we see that Abraham has unexpected results in his life? How does it feel when you depart from your home to a new unfamiliar territory and you know that you will never return home? What is it like to go not knowing your destination? What thoughts will you be contemplating? During biblical times, they didn't have GPS to give it to Abraham. If he missed the road, the GPS would tell him to recalculate. No, but he just went. There are several biblical narratives in addition to the migration of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, along with their families leaving their homes to settle temporarily in different places because of lack of food in Egypt. The Bible records how Naomi and, his fam and her family left Bethlehem because of famine and migrated to Moab. We read stories in the Bible about how most of the migrants stayed in their new homes and never returned to their previous homes. Many were assimilated to a certain degree but never forgot their homes. We are seeing the same pattern in practice today in this community. There are immigrants that have lived in America for many years but still practice their culture. When the slaves were brought here from Africa, they, they brought with them their African culture. And one of the cultures that the slaves brought from Africa was religion. Immigrants brought their religion, Christianity or otherwise. Africans and Asians roots are being placed around the United States of America today. Immigrants become religious to deal with the challenges of adopting to a new country. Immigrants are drawn to religion because it provides them space of belonging to the community. Within their religious congregations, they find a community that they can identify with, where they can celebrate ethnic traditions and values, a place that they can develop personal relationships with each other. I was in France last summer through the Pacific School of Religion visiting refugee camps. I was able to encounter people that were displaced from their homes and they have journeyed thousands of miles to reach Europe, sleeping in tents on the streets or in camps. During the days we spent in the camp, I was reminded about how the scripture is filled with stories forcefully displaced people which are similar to those displaced today. I had an opportunity to talk to a young man that visited us. His name was Yusuf, a Sudanese refugee living in Paris after nearly four months of torturous journey. He shared his story which started from the moment he left his home up to arriving in Paris. Yusuf's story began with him and his brother in northern Sudan, fleeing from the ranks of the military after refusing orders to shoot innocent people. After managing to cross into Libya and move into a coastal Tripoli area, they connected with the second stage where their trip would then use the human trafficking network that transport them as human cargo to shores of Europe. For Yusuf, the journey through Libya with its ongoing civil war was the only open route and an effort to collect the payments required by smugglers for sports on the boats that would take them across the Mediterranean Sea, which is in chaotic. Yusuf was telling us that when they are in the boats, is the place of great love. Everybody is crammed together. People sitting on your laps. People standing on your shoulder. 
That's what you call love in that boat to cross the Mediterranean to get to Europe. The simple task that he was to be for him to cross was to find food and money to pay the traffickers to cross him over. But he was able to manage to reach Paris. But unfortunately, the war in Libya killed his brother and he made it to Europe by himself. We see all the stories from the refugees when we were there. Yusuf is one of those that are part of the human flower that has paid the price and we continue to do so for political and economic policies that has been underway for many generations around the globe. There is great faith in the souls of refugees of returning home one day. One of the refugees made a statement to me. He said, I always think about going back home when peace comes. But I wish it were today or tomorrow. But we don't know the future. I'm waiting on God. The legacy of being a refugee and a newcomer to a place far from home is something that I think will inform us about Jesus' teaching. When he set off on his mission, he took up the life of a displaced person with nowhere to lay his head. It is only by faith that we will migrate with an inherited promises of God. It is true faith that we can claim for ourselves God's gracious promises about blessing and salvation and life everlasting in Christ. God does not ever abandon his people that are on the journey of faith. There are plenty of times when we feel that we are abandoned, but the story of Jesus is, the, is that God is always in our companion, even when we enter the darkest and lowly places of our world. There are no places that we can go that God is not already promised to go with us. Where are you called by God to go today? What unknown territory awaits you? It might be a call that a journey that you are going to need groups of friends. Maybe God is calling you out of no place to take on a role that you is the only one that can fill that void. God might be calling you to leave the comfort and unfamiliar setting that you can go and experience and be a blessing to others. In the midst of this utter darkness and hopelessness, there is a promise from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Although the darkness might, not be, might be too thick, but God's light and glory scatter the darkness and shine brightly on God's people. God's plan is always grander than we imagine. God's grace is always greater than we can understand. God's mercy is always far reaching than we could follow. As Christians, where is God calling you to go? Where are you called by God to go? today, tomorrow, next year. It may be that you will not be required to move to a new city, a new country. God may be calling you to do new things in your life, to help the poor, help the marginalized, to help the displaced, and help the homeless, the prisoners, and so on. God will be calling you to a new leadership role in this church. Answer God's call when that call comes to you. Are you ready to say, Lord, here I am, I'm ready. It is time for us as Christians to welcome the love that will drive away fear in us to venture on the journey of faith. It is time for us to join God in God's own journey to bring healing and delight to the many that are in loneliness, pain, and fear. It is time to go. Are you ready? Amen.